very simple question right at the very top. How does this feel? Yeah, I'll see a massive achievement for myself and something you know I'm really happy about. You know, something I got to share over the weekend with my family uh, and my friends. Um, obviously, a day I never thought I'd see come, um, and now it has. Obviously, you no know, massive elation really uh, for me and everyone close to me. You never thought this day would come. No. Why? You know, you just obviously I've, I've worked through the worked through the leagues. You know, when I'm some cold, dark ones in you know, the Ryman League and you know, even lower than that. Uh, and then also League Two, you know, and the conference and the conference south. It's, you know, it's a level, uh, obviously, this national team, you know, you think is too far away almost. Does it make it all the more sweeter that you've come up the hard way? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Obviously, I feel like I've, uh, you know, I've put in some hard yards and, you know, proved myself at them levels to just kind of, you know, get to this level. I don't think it's a... Uh, a fluke to get called up to the England squad. Um, so, you know, I'm here to hopefully prove myself again. What a season it's been for you. You start off the season understudy to Tom Heaton. He then gets injured. You're now first choice in the Premier League, playing brilliantly, and a call up to the senior England squad. Has it been a bit of a whirlwind for you? Yeah, of course. You know, last six months, um, something I couldn't have foreseen happening. Um, you know, when, when Tom went down, obviously it was opportunity for me and something that's kind of blossomed into you know an England call up and obviously Burnley sitting seventh in the league you know 43 points you know best ever total um, so obviously a, a, a six months I obviously couldn't have seen happening back then definitely. What have you learned from Tom Heaton? I wonder how much you two compete with each other and how much you push each other? Yeah a lot you know so I've worked with him for, for a year and a half now um, someone that's been massively supportive ever since I've walked through the door. You know, he's the first person to, to text me when I signed. And uh, after the Crystal Palace game, he's the first one to text me, you know, as well after the game. Uh, you know, he's been supportive throughout, you know, and, and to be fair, you know, it can't be easy for him. Um, you know, being injured is probably one of the hardest things in football. Um, so, you know, he's a top guy, uh, top class, you know, and it's shone through. You mentioned there that Burnley are seventh in the Premier League, um, impressed so many people this season. Um, how much has what you've achieved surprised even you? Um, obviously, I think within the camp at, at Burnley, you know, we knew what we could achieve. I think, you know, we, um, I think we realised how good we were, and we, you know, we started at Stamford Bridge, and you know, we got a win there, and went to Wembley, you know, a week later, a couple of weeks later, and you got a point there. And I think, you know, belief kind of grew within us through them results, and kind of carried on. Um, you've won a lot of admirers, as we say. Is the key now trying to keep this squad together beyond the summer? Yeah, of course. You know, I, I think that's a massive thing. Um, you know, keep keep your good players and, and and add to it. You know, to keep pushing ourselves. That's what's you know great about our squad at Burnley. Is, you know, you push each other, push each other. Sorry, you know, each day, and you know, we've got two players in every position at least. Uh, you know, fighting for the shirt. It's significant that Gareth Southgate has called up four goalkeepers. That suggests to us that he hasn't yet decided on who his number one is for the World Cup squad yet. Does that make you optimistic? Obviously, I'm, I'm here now, so it's obviously a, a bonus. Um, I think if I weren't in this squad, then you know, I think a, a shot of the World Cup was probably you no know, an outsider at least at most. So um, the fact that I'm here, you know, I've got, I've got to you know, prove myself at this level. How was it training? Do you feel comfortable in that company yet? Yeah, of course. Something I've enjoyed. You know, I've come here to you know enjoy it, and uh, I've come here to you know show show what I'm about. Um, you know, in football, you've got to be hungry. You know, I'm happy to be here, obviously, but I want to prove myself here as well. And, you know, and that's what I'm here to do. And I want to play for England. It's difficult for goalkeepers, isn't it? There's only one in, a, in every starting eleven. And I wonder whether what's happened to Joe Hart is, is kind of a cautionary tale to all goalkeepers. Four months ago, Gareth Southgate sat where you are now and said that Joe Hart's his number one. Now it looks completely up in the air. He's, he's, you know, he's lost his place. He's not playing regularly. Is, is that a cautionary tale for goalkeepers? I think, you know... In football, things change so quickly, and I think things are rarely set in stone. Um, especially over any any period of time, you know, Heaps is obviously coming back from injury himself, um, and you know, playing reserve games and stuff. So I'm not taking anything for granted uh, at club level, let alone you know, England level. And I think that's you know, the way you've got to be, especially in this profession. Do you feel as though the the number one jersey for England is up for grabs, for somebody to step forward and make it their own? I think obviously, you know, it will be come the summer, you know, there's got to be one number one. Um, come the World Cup, there's got to be one goalkeeper, like you say, who has that slot. So, 
No, I think obviously there's eight games left for the Premier League season. Um, I think it's every man for himself. Do you believe that can be you? You obviously want it to be you. Yeah, I want it to be me. Yeah, who wouldn't? You know, it's obviously a massive honour um, to represent your country first of all, and then to, to go to a World Cup. You know, is a is a massive honour. So, obviously, it's something I want to be me, and that, that's obviously why I'm delighted to be here. You're clearly a confident guy. You've proved that in how how far you've come and how quickly you've come. But I wonder how you'd feel if Gareth Southgate said to you, "Right, Holland away. I want you to make your England debut between the posts." Do you feel ready to do that? I think, you know, that's what I'm here. Like, like I say, you know, you've got to be you've got to be hungry in football, and you've got to be greedy almost as well. Uh, I think, and, and to push yourself and uh, to challenge yourself. And obviously, international football for me would be a new challenge, um, but a challenge you know I'm, I want to take on. What do you make of those two friendly fixtures? Holland away, Italy at home. Two of the superpowers of world football, really, aren't they? Yeah, I think they're you know, great teams um, and great preparation for us. You know, looking forward to to the summer. Um, they're the games you know you want to play in against other top top players. Like being, you know, training for, uh, the lads the last couple of days. You know, you want to train with the top players. Um, and that's something I've enjoyed. And you know, the lads, you know, the two four, uh, friendlies we're looking forward to. Last one from me. What's Gareth Southgate said to you? Has he had a, a, a private word with you yet? I also, you know, welcomed me on the first day, and um, you know, all the lads and all the staff have been extremely welcoming. I must say, um, ever since I came through the door, like I say, it's been you know an easy settling in period um, so far. Any further live questions? Down at the back. There's a sense that when it comes to major tournaments, it's it's helpful for players to have experience at the very top of the game, European football, the top of the league. And clearly, that's not something, despite having a great season for Burnley. Um, no, I don't think so. Obviously, you know, we've got some great players in this squad. Um, I say some have uh, played at the top of European football and some haven't. Um, you know, and, but we want to do what we feel like is possible, and you know, we, we know we've got a, a great squad here um, and great belief. And, you know, we have great talent in this country. You know, you've seen the last couple of years, how many youth tournaments that you know England has won. I don't think that's to be underestimated, you know. Um, so you know, we've got to go over in the summer with great belief. As the newcomer among the goalkeepers, do you, do you realistically see yourself as fourth choice at the moment? And you've got work to do to try and get into the reckoning for the final squad? Um, I don't know what choice I'd be. Obviously, I um, have to ask the manager that question, I think. Um, but obviously work to do, like you say, you know, there's, there's two friendlies now and a couple at the end of the season and, you know, Premier League matches to play. Um, I think every minute will count. There's a lot of talk about Russia and whether it's in light of things that are going on off the field, whether it's, it's safe for fans but also the family of players. Is it, if you were to be selected for the final World Cup, or is it somewhere you'd want your friends coming to cover? Do you feel comfortable about that? I think obviously it's a decision. You know, we'll take advice from the FA and, you know, close to the time, you know, I think we'll seek that advice and, you know, probably heed it. Um, obviously, you want family and friends to be there, um, but safety has always got to come first, obviously. Any further live questions? Come on at the back there. Um I was I was released from Ipswich at sixteen. Um you know, I got told that I wasn't good enough. Um and you know, at, the, at that point, you know, you are lower than a snake's belly, you know. That that's the point where you think, you know, the dream is over, definitely. So I'd say that's probably you know, the lowest point I've been at.